Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Story Break, where some bros in Burbank do their best to break some of Bollywood shit. <laughs> ran out of B sounds <laughs> immediately. To now break you, you, Hollywood's you know that. hottest and most unadaptable uh, blockbusters. stories. Uh, blockbusters. There we go. <laughs> ideas. We're normally uh, myself, uh, Will Campos. And Matt Arnold. Hello. For and those who listen to this podcast, yeah. I will say hello <laughs> instead of wave like Will. I wave like the queen. Uh, I am Will Campos. And today, very special episode, we are joined by podcast extraordinaire, wow. actor extraordinaire, wow. host extraordinaire. Younger brother extraordinaire. extraordinaire. <laughs> Jimmy Wong, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Jimmy, to the show. Greetings. Winner uh, of the Wong family favorite son award, <laughs> a record 30 years running. <laughs> Even uh, before you were born. You dang, were born. <laughs> that's intense. Well, I'm 30 now, though. It makes sense. Yeah. Are you? You're yeah. Good, you're, you're such a young looking dude. Wow. Thank you. You've aged very well, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy's you been know. very busy uh, as of late. You had a show just come out on Disney yeah. uh, called Polaris Primetime, which you are the host of, and which we, myself, and some of the uh, Rocket Jump crew and alum are. Pretty much are everybody in. other than Will and myself <laughs> <laughs> got invited yeah, to go what to the Disney. Fuck, Jimmy? Got well, invited to go to Disney. Look, this is general we don't audiences. Need those ugly mugs yeah, who hang out behind the faces. camera. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You guys got the voice. I mean, look. I don't have the voice either. You got faces made for radio, guys. I'll just say this much. We never saw your face when you were shot by either, did we, Will? That's true. Yeah. No. Uh, And also... uh, And we also cut all of Matt's scenes out from the show, essentially. (laughs) As Zeus cast. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and Jimmy Wong is uh, uh, the host, the co-host of one of Magic's most electrifying podcasts. The Command Zone. So for those yeah. of you who are Magic the Gathering fans of the Commander format specifically, wow. the top the top Magic podcast in that yes. sub In genre, that realm, right? I think we're actually number two or three now. The only things that we're behind are limited resources, which is for the limited format, and that's the reason we started the show as we were listening to that, and then Drive to Work, which is done by the head of R&D, Mark Rosewater, at Wizards. So he always drives to work, puts on the microphone as he drives to work, and then we'll talk for 30 minutes straight about... Uh, like one you're of ta- the old sets, the design theory behind something. You're if telling you're a me, gamer, hold on real quick. You're telling me that we could be doing this much easier just by putting microphones in our cars. Yeah, <laughs> instead of having uh, six lights and five cameras going simultaneously. Well, this will be a little change of pace. This is, for by you, the Jimmy. way, Jimmy. Great podcast etiquette is plugging not just your show but someone <laughs> else's show yeah. on the podcast. Uh, so that's why uh, Magic the Gathering is actually why we called you in because when people ask me, uh, Jimmy, what's what's your brother up to? I say, well. He somehow spun a career out of being one of the most like experts on Magic the Gathering. Well, I have like, I literally have all my crappy cards. I sold like all my magic cards and I still somehow have like twenty thousand magic cards sitting around. And as a joke, I was just like, I mean, there's no way Jimmy knows what's awaken the bear. Yeah, it's two in a green for an instant target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn, I believe. And what else? Gains what? A trample, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. god. Hold oh, on, these are just mad. Hold on, so real quick, real quick. Matt just has a box of commons and he's reading the Titles and Jimmy's up from the top of his dome. Well, this is Alpine from a, Grizzly. Alpine Grizzly is two in your green for a four two. No other text. <laughs> oh my god! It's a great card. It turns on ferocious in this. Yeah, so, one so, more. So, one no, more. It's one a more, real please. shame if you're listening to this because I also just want to describe that Matt is reading the card and then for a split second Jimmy's eyes roll back <laughs> in his head like he's an anime character who just got jacked into yeah, a mech or yeah. something yeah. like that. Safe space. Uh, your mind. Sultai palace. Scavenger. Sultai Scavenger is a three three flyer with delve, which means you can exile cards from your library to pay for its cost, and I believe it's five in the black. Oh my. This god. is oh the, my god. This is the whole podcast. This is today. <laughs> We're not gonna. This is story. insane! Jump- I didn't know you could do this, Jimmy. <laughs> well, when you so Kanzan Shark Hero is. I mean, there's the, like 900 cards that have come out since these cards have come yeah, out. Yeah, no, not even probably more than that. One more, one more, one please, more. Matt. One right. more, please. Smoke Teller. Oh, uh, Smoke Teller. One in the green for a two-two, and it has an activated ability for two in the blue. You can be looked down at target face down card. It's actually one in the blue. It's one in the blue. Shoot. Yeah. Oh, that's a little okay, well, that's not Holy anymore. crap! <laughs> yeah. That's, that's well, okay. Same yeah. level stuff. Yeah. Oh my it. goodness. Well, it's a good thing that we have here because we want to tackle for story breaks. We're not playing magic. I know here. your career is mostly just playing games. Off. We do work here. <laughs> and what we're going to do is in one hour, I, I believe there is a Magic the Gathering movie coming out, but what we're going to do I just is looked it up, and apparently it's dead in the water. The writer who was really? one of the guys on, one of the producers on Great Game of Thrones was attached to write it, and his, oh. he was tweeting well. a little a couple of months ago, careful, Matt, uh, was tweeting a couple months ago <laughs> that uh, it looks like the project's not going forward. Well, it's probably because they didn't have a full hour to spend on it, which is what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to take a whole hour 
here. And me, I mean, I played quite a bit of Magic, but I know nothing about the lore. Will does not play Magic or knows anything about the lore. And I don't, I don't and I've know absorbed much it interest. just by osmosis by being next to Jimmy and having yeah. coming home to literally thousands of Magic and the Gathering And Jimmy just told cards. us you don't know much about the lore. Are you going to be know... on the phone while we do this podcast? No, no, no. We're talking, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm trying to negotiate a contract right now uh, through Rocket Jump. So it is something that benefits all of us. Uh, my producer was texting me. Oh my god! So, I'm getting two times by my. I own don't bro. know that much about the old lore. So Magic: The Gathering okay. has been around. We're, we are now in its 25th anniversary, so it's wow. 25 years old. It's the oldest card game in the world that is successful as a collectible <laughs> card game. I'm pretty sure. A like. lot, lot of adjectives on so that Jimmy, one. So Jimmy, in order because there's a lot, so I want to narrow yes, this down. So, so I'm going to use you to narrow this down. I'm going to well, read. Well, let me explain how it works before we okay. dive into what I call the common, the the sorry, the current era of Magic: Well, we don't the want to current. I want to read through the storylines because I was doing this with Will. I want you there's to pick. So one. many. Yeah, I'm gonna read these, and you tell me which one we're, we're gonna narrow this down. So, so you, you, just so real much. quick, real quick, Jimmy, you're going to act both as our story Magic: The Gathering expert and consultant, as you've demonstrated aptly by your ability to just recall cards off the top of your dome, and secondly, as the producer of this movie. So you have veto power; you can point us and steer us in any direction. So put on your producer hat. Sure. And Matt, so here we go. These uh, are the st- oh. before before we dive in yeah. too deep on the lore. Uh, Jimmy is our resident expert. Just because there might be someone listening that has never heard. To Magic the Gathering, that this is their right. first time exposure being exposed to it. Could you just give us like a short explanation of kind of like what yeah, the deal totally. with this game is, uh, what it is, why people love it? Before I get into it, uh, this show is brought to you by Zeus Cast. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Uh, great sponsor. They've been doing great quality programming for t- I don't know five years now, right, man? <laughs> yep. uh, okay, so Magic the Gathering is a collectible card game, and it was invented by Richard Garfield, who is a uh, prolific game designer. He also made a game called Netrunner back in the day, yep. as well as King, uh, of Tokyo. King of Tokyo, which is a board game, and he invented it because he wanted to essentially have a competitive card game that you would be able to collect cards. And at first, when the game first came out, you wouldn't know all the cards that existed, right? Mm-hmm. So you would buy a booster pack, and inside that booster pack, I can tell you what that card does too, <laughs> just from the art. Uh, oh my God. So you'd buy these booster packs, and inside would be a bunch of cards, and then uh, a special like rare card. And from there, you would trade with other people, build up decks, and it was this allure of having a competitive card game set in a fantastical universe of Magic the Gathering. So you are supposed, originally the game was supposed to be called Magic, and then each expansion was going to be called something colon, the the Gathering was the name of the first expansion, mm-hmm. but that just happened to stick for the whole name. Mm-hmm. So you take on the role as a player, as a planeswalker, which is someone that can use the energy of the planes and the, the world around you, mana is what they call it, uh, and you can use these ley lines of energy to summon creatures, cast spells, and essentially combat a fellow planeswalker, an enemy planeswalker, who has their own set of spells and creatures. And in Magic, there are five primary colors. And the easy way to refer to it is Wooburg. So it goes white, blue, (laughs) you, black, red, and green. And each of those colors are, as you can imagine, represent very specific themes and concepts. So for instance, if I asked you, Matt, what do you think black represents? Death. Death to a degree, yeah. and so black in magic has now come to represent using death as like using any means to accomplish something, mm-hmm. right? So sort of nefarious. Who, what or, is that? Wooburg. Wooburg. W U B R G. White, blue, black, red, green. So if okay. I ask you, what do you think green represents? It is uh, plants and trees and nature. There you go. Earth. So green has uh, green is all about natural selection. So natural it's very growth. different from other generic fantasy games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. In a, <laughs> so in a, in, a, oh uh, in a lot of ways, magic I think helped really define those like archetypes because it was one of the first fantasy games out there that really was able to bring art onto these. Can you show the the audience what a card looks like, for example? Yeah. A big part of magic was the art. Not for you podcasters. But yes, the art is like the a big art deal. takes up a lot like of close wizards to forty percent of the frames. So yeah, really that beautiful that art. Magic the Gathering single handedly employed a lot things, of concept artists. In so the when I first brought this up, Will was kind of like, "Oh, we're gonna do magic." I was like, "Well, at least one of the things I could like latch onto is like the planeswalkers themselves, which are these cool characters." Yes. But again, I do know that there is so much, and I want to get I want people to get a sense because he says twenty five years. I'm gonna read through the storylines, and you're gonna pick one, Jimmy, and that's what we're gonna work off of. Sure. So I will say this about the movie that apparently is not going forward anymore. In recent years, uh, Richard Garfield is no 
longer design the game, and the current designers decide to add an aspect into the game of actual cards that were Planeswalkers. So this changed the way the game worked a little bit. And through that, you also got main characters of the story. So mm. on this box right here, uh, you see Elspeth, who is a Planeswalker, a white-colored uh, Planeswalker usually. And she is uh, one of the main characters of the magic story. And there are sort of five main characters, of course, one for each of the colors, essentially, oh. that are part of the story now. Chandra. Chandra, Jace. Liliana, Jace, Gideon, and Nyssa. And usually, I, I mean... That three? That's like a... That's... Is that three women and two guys or four women? Yeah, so Magic's great because there's a ton of diversity. And one of the big things that they really want to exemplify is, like, for instance, they just went, they create a lot of new planes that are honoring. It's not racial appropriate. It's not, like, appropriation. So they just went to a plane called Kaladesh, which is filled with inventors. And a lot of the people there are much darker skin tone color. But it's not trying to be like, oh, this is an Indian-themed plane. It's more that they're taking ideas and concepts from those cultures and putting that into the Magic world without appropriating it. So that's cool. It's a very fine line. But, yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of female protagonists in Magic. Uh, they had their first, I believe, uh, transgender character that came out in this block, Kanta Tarkir. So they really want to like focus on that diversity. So the, mm-hmm. the reason that the movie was moving forward is now that they have these five main characters. Those would be the focal point of the movie. But there are tons of stories through Magic's history. A lot of them are very uh, almost biblical in nature about yeah. the sort of wars. Yeah, and I think and what happen. you'll find pretty quickly is that um, unlike unlike an expert such as yourself, uh, we only have one hour to do this, and we uh, are very bad and care little about any sort of details. We just throw our hats in the wind and see where they land. So, yeah. so, let's, let's, so let's, help us let's help hear guide some us like, just so that people get a sense of this. And, and these are storylines that have been used. This in is the just game on Wikipedia. Before. Yeah. So, so these storylines are told in every set. When the set comes out, it usually comes with the story and all of the cards relate to something that so happened in characters We want to make places. this an important movie to you. So you 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 just soak in all this all you just this nostalgia of hearing all your favorite magic and then at the end you say we're going to do this one. Here we go. I played as a kid and I took like a 15 year break. So the Thrawn, we'll see how much I remember. The Brothers War, The Dark, Fallen Empires, The Ice Age, The Homelands, Jamura, The Frexian <laughs> Invasion of which there are like 5, yep. Odyssey, <laughs> Mirrodin, The Kami War, Ravnica, <laughs> Time Spiral, Lauren, Alara, Zendikar, Scars of Mirrodin, Innistrad, Return to Ravnica, <laughs> Theros, Kanza Takar, Takir. Takir, Battle for Zendikar, and Shadows over Innistrad. Wait, really quick. If you threw one fake one in there, do you think you would have been like, no, 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 hold on, that's not real. I really wish you had thought to do that, Matt. Yep. So do Here, I. just make one up right now. Fake one. Steven's world. <laughs> <laughs> so what, 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 what are we making? The Steven. So we have a lot of interesting themes and stuff to play with here. So, uh, for instance, in Innistrad, this is a, a what well, I, I like to just call it a... So these are all planes. And right. in the world, these planeswalkers have the ability to planes walk between the planes of the so multiverse. like different dimensions, essentially? Different dimensions, all in the same universe. And Feels a little bit like little Lego movie-esque, right? Where you have a yeah. whole bunch of universes. That's a good comparison. I think, yeah. I think we're going to do a big, this is like, I'm assuming for their movie, they want to do a, a Lord of the Rings, right? I'm assuming mm-hmm. they want to do a big, yeah, fancy movie. Game of Thrones. I'm sure they looked at like, hey, what's another IP like Game of Thrones? Yeah. Oh, great. Ga- uh, Magic the Gathering has a ton of worlds, a ton yeah. of characters. Let's do this. So, so a lot of Magic's greatest storylines come from the villains. And the villains are usually people intent on destroying one of the planes or having more nefarious Yo, means. Jimmy, so just pick one. So I well I wanted to ask you guys. No, so, no just pick well, No, it. hey, he's the producer. Let him okay. do whatever he wants. <laughs> so what do you I mean as a producer going to my ri- writers, are you guys writers? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Sort of. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> as every writer would tell you. Yeah. I'm not really a writer. Okay, so uh, for instance, I think we we have a couple of choices here and magic fans will groan when I mention this first one because they think this story's been told to death, but it could do very well on the big mm-hmm. screen. The Eldrazi are these sort of interdimensional beings if you look up Eldrazi E-L-D-R-A-Z-I you'll see for those of you wikiing along at home (laughs) the Eldrazi are these sort of interdimensional beings that consume planes and essentially destroy them but they're they're people say they don't have intent necessarily but they are giant enormous and they just they transform the world around them essentially they'll like make people start sprouting tentacles so a little bit like the flood in halo or something yeah it's kind of got that similar feel to it and zombie uh, bad guy and they existed on the plane called zendikar and there's a great cool storyline about them being imprisoned by a couple of planeswalkers and then someone breaking them out and then them destroying the plane around them and then they have to combine together to sort of defeat them. So that has your superhero tie of like, oh, the world's ending. There are these kind giant cosmic type horror. thing. We all yeah. the planeswalkers have to come together to defeat a bigger threat. Exactly. Yeah. And but other planeswalkers are the ones that broke open the hell vault that contained them because they were spiteful of something or whatever. Um, or they had gone mad. Okay, yeah, there's a lot so, there. I'm so those are those are like giant planetary so cosmic horrors. 
Uh, yeah, it's a great way to introduce a team thing, and you have the stereotypical, the world is gonna end unless we can kill them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that I know less about that I, that I find pretty interesting, if you go back, okay. um, there was one. Uh, Theros... Phrexian. So Theros is the gods, uh, is the essentially the Roman no, Greek, Greek gods. gods. That, yeah. That's when I was playing. Yeah, that's um, uh, the other one that Hitler we could just talk about Greek gods. is okay. one of the sort of longest things. Is the Phrexian yeah. invasion. So the Phrexians are like this weird combination of like I don't know what you call. It. They're like machine and horror at the same time. And uh, go back one. They the Phrexian invasion took place over a lot of different sets, and they are. These they're How called do you spell Frexian? P H Y R E X I. You went for the F. I knew it. Nice try. Um, and All the Frexian right. invasion has a lot of sub stories. I really don't know that much about them, but some of the characters in the Frexian invasion, like Urza, are some of the most iconic. They're like the Merlin. I would almost call them of the magic. Uh, so world. they got kind of like well the, they kind of got this like aliens plus Lovecraftian kind of like kinda the Zerg thing. a little bit. Yeah, a little yeah. Bit. yeah, yeah. And the Frexians, uh, the Frexians and Eldrazi share a lot of similar things. And then the same, same general storyline. They're like gonna come and everyone's got to team up to wipe them out or something. Yeah, but I don't know that much about it. Okay. Uh, because I wasn't playing at the time. I know more mm-hmm. about the Eldrazi. Um, I feel like let's go with like the Eldrazi. Good, yeah. That, that feels, feels like a classic. Yeah. Sure. And we got let's do work the off Eldrazi. Um, all right. So hold on. Wait, real quick. Just oh, off the top. Have, I literally have the dual deck here. Mm-hmm. Just off the just off the top here, are we gonna have? Is it gonna be a kid in the real world plays magic? No, this, and is, no, <laughs> this is magic. No, this is magic. He buys a bootleg verboten card off of the shady <laughs> Magic the Gathering guy yeah, and right. he plays it. We already did that with Kellogg's, though. We did the kid get sucked into the game. So he, here's the thing. He, How he buys close... it from the mystical eBay. It's not matter. It's, it's, we I'm just got to make a good movie now. So, yeah, that that's would, the thing is, is how close do you want fans. it to be to the original story or how close do you want it to just be towards what makes the best story here? Well, let me let me start with this because I want to. I guess again, I, I'm, I've ne- I think I've played maybe one game of Magic: The Gathering in my life, uh, and you know I, feel, I always kind of feel like a good sort of compass with these. Like when we did Catan, like it was yeah. like kind of like what is the, the game feel that the game experience. gives you. Like that was how we came up with the like, oh, it's this dark arc that leads you just leads you screwing over your friends, right? Like that mm-hmm. was how we kind of like. Talk me through the emotions of playing Magic: The Gathering. What is a game of the? What is, what is it like to play this game? And what is like the feeling that keeps people coming back? Do you know what I mean? Like, what is right. what is the joy? The specific kind of joy you get out of it when you play it. Magic is for me a very. It's competitive in a lot of different ways, and mm-hmm. it's a lot. It's a game about hidden information. It's a game about um, trying to predict your opponent's moves in advance. It's like chess, but with the pieces always changing. And <laughs> except with... the queen costs three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like chess with a lot of different pieces. But and and each of the chess boards, you bring your own chess set to a whole different table, and they may have a knight that can do X, Y, and Z that's way different than your knight. And so it's sort of about knowing your opponent, mm-hmm. knowing thyself. Or is it thine self? And then being able to essentially leverage your cards, your advantages, your disadvantages, and knowing how to play around stuff, play around things that you know your opponent might have. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of really a lot of that interplay that's really fascinating to me um, because it is at the end of the day you're battling against one other person and it's a duel, right? It's it's a a one on one fight. Yeah, at least in the format that I that is the most popular. The format that I do a podcast on is a little bit different, where it's It's multiplayer. It's much more of like a, a board game. But it's still so because here's what I'm trying to zero in on is that like I feel like you could very easily just take the lore of this and then you just wind up with a direct to DVD knockoff fantasy right. movie that just yeah. feels like cheap Lord of the Rings. Uh, whereas I think what's going to be special about I, that dueling thing is really intriguing to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that idea of like this one on one wizard fight in the lore of the game, like I don't know how in the weeds they get on this. In the lore of the game, like if you're a planeswalker, is this like is this a sport? Is this something you're doing for the joy of competition, or is it like you're trying to exert your will over the like why are, why do the planeswalkers fight each other? The planeswalkers are fighting each other because they're usually it's kind of like they're aligned to be evil or good uh, in a lot of times. So for instance, in the most recent set, Hour of Devastation and Amon Ket, it's sort of an Egyptian themed plane, mm-hmm. and the planeswalkers arrive here, and it's a very strange plane. There are these gods, and everyone is everyone everyone is dedicated in this entire society to uh, to competing to be like the top. Um, prospect, I suppose, or the champion of the god pharaoh, and is, uh, is they await his return. And all these people do are essentially train, 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 and put themselves through like inc- like life endangering tests with these five different gods that all represent like strength, courage, un- uh, mm. you know, passion, and all these stuff. Do people can do people ever go between the planes? 
Yes, that's the whole thing. So these planeswalkers, the main five characters I just talked about, planeswalk here because something's going on. And they find out in the second set that it's this crazy planeswalker that's a dragon called Nicol Bolas mm-hmm. had in, had gone to that plane, Amonkhet, centuries before when his spark was about to die and enslaved the entire plane, uh, mind, wi- mind wiped all of the gods to become these things to essentially train up an army for him. And that trick them all into thinking that he's some benevolent, beautiful god. So when he comes back, he mur- he just murders all the gods and essentially like lights fire to the plane and just like is like now I have my my mummy horde of whatever you know. So like he's an evil character. He wants to use all these people for his own means. So, so this is like to, life or death fights. So yeah, get, so they are to, life or death to, fights. So to start with the Italian we have to start thinking about where this could go because like yeah I think you're right in terms of we were just like well let's just take Eldrazi it's like I just looked they have a 400 page novel on Eldrazi it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like you do the story of Eldrazi and it will be one of the planes that you talk about tell me if this is, feels if this is accurate to what magic is but it feels like yeah something like you kind of said Lego movie or, or I think Avengers. the fun of it the fun, of, the fun it of it is trying to like, take and, a bunch of well, different crazy different things and about Planeswalkers there are people who walk through dimensions yeah. like I mean yeah, they're literally they doing the Dark Tower where the yeah. guns Slinger can go That's through different dimensions. Yeah. So again, I wonder if it's then what we're getting to is being a movie, a first movie for people who don't know, you want to introduce the idea of these planeswalkers that can go between different dimensions. Yes, so absolutely. ignoring who for right now, you'd probably pick one. Yep. Right? You'd start yeah. with one, <laughs> and you would have to build up this this problem that is going to defeat in fact, this might let's say each of them is part of a plane. There's going to be this bigger problem, whether it's the Eldrazi or Cthulhu or whatever is this big right. creature that's going to destroy all the planes or whatever it is. And these different planeswalkers are going to meet each other through, their through this. And they will start by competing with each other in the way. Because as far <laughs> as they're they concerned... It's very hard to trust another planeswalker. Exactly. As far as they're concerned, they're, they're in Egypt. And all of a sudden, to. Jace shows up. He's like, who the hell are you? It's like, hey, we need your help. He's like, um, you're an invader. And they fight. And it's kind of like a little bit like Avengers in terms of like they all have their different reasons for doing so something. So we can see them dueling against you each other You see them dueling each other. Bit, yeah. And then they realize, oh, actually, we're all in this together because all of our problems are actually the same problem, which is the ultra are coming to destroy. You have a you have a sort of planes. Game of Thrones esque thing there, where it's like one you know you can have a character that's trying to unite everybody against some greater threat and trying to like lose all the petty squabbles in the way. That's what so I'm looking at. Yeah. There. yeah. So who are the five? The five. Yeah. Are, well, well, walk us through these characters. So the white. I'll do it through the color. So yeah, Wooberg yeah. white is Gideon Jura. G I D E O N. <laughs> we'll just say Gideon. Gideon. So Gideon. Yeah. And, and say you do not have enough bandwidth to yeah. remember everyone's yeah, Jimmy, full names is going to just blow our minds right, so here. Gideon, tell us about Gideon. Gideon is a, he's sort of like a classic, hunky, like really just buff dude that's a soldier, right? And he he, he came up... Uh, classic hunky buff boy. I just Yeah, classic hunky buff notes. boy, not necessarily the smartest of the bunch, but by far the most noble and willing to sacrifice himself. A lot of what white uh, means in the story is like... So he's a buff wizard? He's not a wizard necessarily. <laughs> I thought that, but, he saying, was, but he like casts spells and stuff. He does have cast spells, spells, but yeah, his sort of special thing is he's, he's very close to indestructible. He's just got incre- like super armor essentially, and, and he he fights. Full. This will be perfect. So we'll get because we're gonna work in shorthand. So like, okay, hunky buff soldier who's indestructible is explain like. If you were to just, just quickly describe his plane, so if it's like, you know, if that one was like Egyptian or Theros was like Greek god, he, what is he's kind a, of... He's a Theros plane. He comes from... Okay, so he's like... Main... So he is very like European <laughs> medieval, it's a, essentially, right? Yeah, it's I'll a, show you a picture of him. He, it's a plane that's a lot like Venice Beach. There's a lot of weightlifting <laughs> sets all over the place. Everyone just gets yoked constantly. Okay, but like... His home plane is Theros. He, he is a... Uh, Oh, he's sexy. Yeah, he's a buff dude. He, he's he has, got like this like brown hair. He's like this long hair. He looks hair, like a, looks like a Mid- facial what's his last hair. Name? Jura, J U R A. He looks like a medieval times rider, am I right? And he's yeah. he's all about, you know, he doesn't like to break rules. He's he's got those archetypes, right? And he has this cool Captain America. He's a goodies too shit. Yeah, he's like, yeah, 100%. He and was yeah, 100% and, a and Captain they're, they're America. They're like paladin. When you say indestructible, they're usually like Support their their like uh, making other people buff also is like in the game, right? Okay. Is what yeah, he use. doesn't really Healing. buff other people. He's like okay. a personal trainer. But he does. He does. He's he's all about rallying the troops and being. So he came in Theros. Yeah, he his home plane is in Theros. Okay, so his home plane is Theros. Great. So yeah, just from to try to get a sense. Yeah, from, yeah. From, <laughs> we'll say Theros so we sound smart. From, from Theros. Theros. Okay, got Greek. it. Okay. Let's blue. Get blue is Jace Balerin. J A C E. Jace is your uh, 
your smart boy. He's the one mind. that has mind magic, right? Yeah. He's able to jump into someone's brain, tell them what to do, read thoughts. Oh, He's so kind of got two. They're also <laughs> sexy looking. So blue, oh so, yeah. So blue, well, let me do see. people ship? Saying, oh, just real quick, do people ship Gideon and Jays? Because I could totally see this. <laughs> I could totally. Like, uh, I haven't seen that much of they that. They got a real. Looks like a real Kirk Spock kind of thing going on. Um, so we're anyway, real quick. Yeah, we're gonna call for a but, poster. We're gonna also call for the the cover of the Harlequin romance novel between <laughs> Gideon and Jays. Yeah. If you guys want to I feel like also blue is not just water is so much as it is control like blue is like about in the blue game, is the color of knowledge you're like a trickster like not in, trickster necessarily it's about you can have strength you can have all whatever this other I play, stuff, but I'm going to use my Josh, mental power I just would not be able to play the game Josh would play blue and then he'd be like okay cool my turn and then he would take all my cards. I would have no cards, and then he played my cards himself. Yeah, blues. And about I was like, "Your turn." I'd be like, "Great." What do I do? He's like, "Nothing." I'm like, "Great." Your turn again, and then he did it all. Yeah. So blues <laughs> about the manipulation of knowledge and using that. He's, so he's our Loki. They, they value You're knowledge. Loki. Loki. He's got the Loki aspect. Is he to him. a good guy? He's or a, bad a good guy? guy, though. I would put him closer to good Charles Loki. Xavier than Loki, if that uh, makes sense. Okay. okay. All right. The trickster part of it comes into a. There is someone else that will 100% be the Loki of the group. Okay. And who? And what is his uh, planes? He came from a place. Jace Bellerin. Uh, Come on, Jimmy. You know every card in the game. Well, I don't know. See, that's the thing. Blossoming he, Sands. Blossoming Sands? It's just the green white land, right? Yep. Yeah. I think it, I think it comes okay. in play tapped. He, so he... <laughs> From Vryn, V R Y N. But the thing is, a lot the way that these planeswalkers awake or ignite their spark is sort of like um, a, a mutant when they find out they have superpowers for the first time. Cool. cool. Except in this case, so there are like regular folks in these worlds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So landscape landscape of Vryn is littered with lines of gigantic inhabited mage rings. So he comes from a mage planet. Yeah, he comes from a mage planet. Okay, and, so and, powerful. And when a planeswalker ignites their spark, they usually planeswalk to another place and then they, so they spend more time. So he comes from like I'm gonna say just for sake of it, he comes from like a Tomorrowland. Mage land. It's like brilliant mages, Vulcan. magicians, yeah. sure. high tech. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Here is the person that I Sorry, think all magic fans. should <laughs> potentially be the main character of this because okay. I think her character is Chandra? by far. No, black. Liliana Vess. Ooh. She's so a... she is a from Dominaria, which is sort of like the most well known, biggest plane. And she was born a noble born healer originally. And. Uh, her brother got really sick, and I believe she tried. She essentially necromancied to try and save his life and turned him into so a zombie. A full metal alchemist. Yeah, but she's also the Loki of the group because she has made a blood pact with like five different demons to keep her youth and life forever. Essentially. Okay, but she started with her brother died. Yeah, her brother died. Uh, she was trying to save or heal her sick brother, and then in, in, in inadvertently turned him into a zombo. Whoa! Turned him. It's like into the a zombo. Of what so you she's want. got. Yeah. So she's got tragedy. Uh, I actually wouldn't probably make her the and then, main. But, you and bring. She's, she's over, like a cool. She's the tough person of the group, and then you find out she's got this tragic yeah, past. Is actually yeah. this good. She's also person. over a hundred years guy. old. Or she's a bad guy. And to keep her power, because black is all about the thirst for power. Mm -hmm. They'll pay life to draw cards. For example, mm -hmm. she made a pact with four of the multiverse's most powerful demons. Okay. So and then and then her story is about sort of defeating these demons and breaking out of the blood pact that she made with them. So she's them. trying to break out of her pact. This yeah. by the way, this feels like if you wanted to do like a trilogy of movies, like if the team breaks up at the end of it, this feels right, like boom, she's on just one side. Right now we have to come up with a trilogy. Yeah, for sure. Well, she definitely is cares the most about herself, but we'll team up with other people mm -hmm. when is needed. But right. but she so comes from her, a very tragic beginning, which is why I really like yeah, the character, yeah. her Dominaria. Which is like what? It's actually uh, a really hip, kind of cool one place. Sentence, a lot of weed, a lot of... I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this is a different place. It's a cool laid back. Dominaria place. is, I think, the Beaches. main. It's the. It's the one. It's the main plane, I believe. That yeah, is... it looks pretty Middle Earth. So Magic the Gathering. Yeah, yeah Magic, Magic the Gathering, the Gathering <laughs> land. Okay. And I believe uh, it's the it's the plane that the Frexians tried to invade. It's just okay. it's the one that the most of us happened to. Okay, so really okay, next character, Chandra. Yeah. Chandra Nalar. Chandra is the red mage of the group. She is the most passionate as well as Power the most Mancer. volatile and the pyromancer. Yeah, so her power yeah. is red fire. She can throw fireballs this at people. This shit's fucking cool. They really nailed it on this. Yeah. This is like a cool little superhero team. Okay, all right. Yeah. Pa so pyromancer. She, she grew up on Kaladesh, that plane that I was talking to you about. Both of her parents were anti... They're What's, sort that, of like What's that plane? Uh, Kaladesh. K-A-L-A-D-E-S-H. It's a plane of inventors where they use like the steampunk. energy... steampunk. Yeah, it's very steampunk -y. Okay, It's cool. the closest steampunk that magic plane. has gone to steampunk. <laughs> okay, steampunk, great. I love... Great. I love hey, we, got, we got like 30 minutes. <laughs> Trying to come up this entire thing. This is how it's gotta work. Yeah, so her parents... Parents were renegades, and they were captured by the consulate, and 
uh, brutally punished. I believe her father died. That's cool. So she's like a cooler version she's of that the, shouldn't yeah. even be called Rogue One. <laughs> oh, damn. damn hot take. She's a damn. fire hot Yo, take alert. You hear that, ladies and gentlemen? That's a hound of sizzling so hot takes hot take right going into against, your ears. Going against the bad the, people the, of her. The, the government, yeah. Okay. They, they were who are trying to control how people use the energy to make inventions and stuff, I think. Mm. So they're very strict. They crack down a lot. Uh, a little bit of Legend of Korra. And like, mm -hmm. as she was arrested and about to be, I believe, executed, her spark ignited and she zapped away. Oh, oh that's cool. That's a cool that's, opening that's scene. That's a good man. Yeah. That's a cool yeah. opening That's a dope scene. Yeah, executed, yeah, yeah. she becomes uh, a planeswalker, planeswalker. and then just yeah. has to learn about like what the heck this is. That's cool. That's really cool. All right, All so, right. Yeah, I, I mean, I was hoping she was our main because she was my planeswalker when I played. Yeah, and then she, I believe she, 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 <laughs> she was my first planeswalker. She planeswalked to David like a, 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 like a, I don't know, a plane with a bunch of other pyromancers who taught her how to control her art. But she's, she's always, dope, so she's learned, like, okay, she's learned so a lot, she but learns. at the same time, throughout all the story, she's always the one that flies off the handle the most easily, Perfect. is unable to control Perfect. her emotions the best. Yeah, and she's young, she's a rookie, she's got a She's got to grow and mature. She would think she would judge Liliana, who's this like bad person and all stuff. But Liliana's lived a whole she's life like, I and fucking and had shit. She's a hundred years, years old. old. I have credit card debt to four different teams. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. You would definitely have shown her exactly. be self righteous towards yeah. Liliana. Yeah, and then it'd be like, oh, I've lived four hundred years and watched my brother die and have made packs with multiple demons. I've lived ten lives yeah. Yeah. compared to you, young little fourteen year old. Deal with it. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. The final one is Nissa Ravane. N i s s a. And this is what color is this? Green. Green. And she is yes, a, an elf, I believe, and she um, is elemental magic. So she's very connected to the earth. She's able to harness the power of the ley lines. Looks like what she's part they, tree, too. So ley lines are how pe in magic arts describe the... <laughs> Yeah, she's part tree. <laughs> she she has this like uh, like she can one of her planeswalker cards summons this like tree thing called a Shia, the Awoken World or something. Anyway, mm -hmm. she's able to harness the energy of the land. So like man, imagine if there was a force, it, but in this case, it runs through like you know like veins of each planet in plane called ley lines, and she's able to harness that energy. So she's able to. Con she always is very connected to the earth. If like a tree dies, she knows it. You know that kind of thing. Big old hippie man. They screwed up with like. Dude, we just, freaking let's just cut this and just like actually do this movie. What's cool is like all these characters. All these characters are like because it'd be easy to be like oh she's just like the the mage or whatever. I like they all have a, a a twist that's like a little bit less than like the generic fantasy you'd expect. Yeah. Because it'd be like oh she's the Obi Wan like forceful, but she's not the priest. Like if you look at it, it's like compared to like Gideon or whatever. I don't know. I just like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, okay, so. Nissa is very tied to the Eldrazi. She was uh, trying to channel in with the lamb because she knew that there was danger in there, and then her brain connected with the Eldrazi Titans and was just like, Ooh! Oh, it's so a like, little bit like, um, so like she's Starcraft. seen the beast. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of Starcraft. It like bent her mind, right? and, and then she planeswalked immediately because... So she was trying it's to... Like Picard, she got got by the board, basically, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, or yeah, like... Yeah. Or, or like um, Kerrigan. Uh, Ender's Game. Like, she, oh, she okay, didn't yeah. want to kill the... She was trying to connect with the Eldrazi. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, instead of just, like, murder them, because she's like, oh, they're sentient people. They are sentient and people, And then yeah. she connected with them, and she would, like, that's how she, like, be, yeah. realized she was a planeswalker. The so reason she that the Eldrazi are a little cool. tough is because they're seen as benevolent and not really particularly having emotions or evil or any of that stuff. They just are world consumers. They just go consumers. Con, uh, what do you, what do you say your personality is like? Sorry. She's very much on the reserve side, quiet, taken to, like, and not easily connecting to humans because she is connected to the earth more than anything else. So she doesn't. Well, then she, again, if you were going to have this thing kind of scrambled her circuits a little when she tried to jack her brain. Yeah, into yeah. It. yeah. Yeah, that's like a little, like, like, river, uh, and, and a little river. Little river. Yeah, 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 totally. Okay. Okay, so just, uh, so just to get a sense here, we got this. Whoever did, these are great. Whoever did this, this is some good yeah. stuff. They did most of our work for us. Yeah, okay. so we got hunky, buff, you know, the classic hunk. dude. Loyal but again, to the But end. like loyal, and I oh, like that he's not really. Oh, this is such a one, too, because you do the main, the red chick's the main character, yeah. and then she zaps in, and then you got the two rivals for her affection, the hunky yep. hot man and oh, the sexy God, brain so boy. You got the good, you got the good Fucking horror boy, Dominaria's and then you got Jace, like, you're nothing. Like, you got the, basically her mentor in, yeah. in, in, um, well, in, the, in Liliana. In the story, the romance romances that are starting to burgeon are Jace and Liliana because Jace can read Liliana's mind at being centuries old and understand oh. her pain. Oh, that's good. And Liliana mm. also sees Jace as the most powerful and wants to use him the most. There's a little Ooh. bit of a double dynamic I feel like So I feel like our and movies just go clearly look at magic because they seem to have cooler story stuff than... <laughs> 
and then Chandra, the most shit out there. The yeah. red mage, being the passionate fiery one, is growing to have a burgeoning connection with Nissa, the oh. unfiery one, because they actually in the story. It's like, oh, you're so aloof. They're like, more open than more progressive than we were thinking. That's great. Yeah. 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 So in the story, For actually, us. the way that they defeat the Eldrazi Titans when they come back is Nissa channels the energy of the earth and combines it with like Chandra's giant fireball. Oh shit. And that is and the end of story. Okay, Good job, so that. Did. Did. <laughs> that, 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 that sounds like we just. This is us learning about how good the story yeah. of Magic if the you, Gathering. I think you know, here, shame on me because I was like, Magic the Gathering. This is probably a bunch of stat obsessed nerds <laughs> just grafted some Tolkien bullshit onto their yep. spreadsheet system. But like, no, this is really good. This yeah. is yeah. Really they really put a lot of time shame and care into this. Um, and to be fair, well, th there is still a lot of Excel spreadsheeting if you want to do that too. Yeah. Part of me gets a sense that like the people. I, so they should in the, defeat really them. quickly before we try to figure out this movie that's not going to be as good as what's already there <laughs> is uh, how, in the Magic the Gathering. Like, how much do people like the lore? Or do you do you get a sense that they do you get a sense that like Games Workshop almost cares or Wizards uh, cares about it more than the fans do? You know, it's an interesting balance. I think people really do like the lore mm -hmm. because you'll see on the subreddit people posting the stories all the time, commenting yeah, on it, cool. talking about the story, and then occasionally even drawing pictures of things that happen, little cartoons and stuff. So there yeah. is a very passionate community about the story. I think because well, the game's a lot more imagination so than this than freaking Game of Thrones. I know a lot of people watch Game of Thrones, put their nose up at Magic Gathering like a bunch of like dorky yeah. stuff. But like I don't know, all, I'm looking at these. Characters. Like this is all freaking yeah. I mean, the, the, it's cool. It's like I'm in my head. I'm like thinking about I'm like wow. There's a lot of like depth and fun that you can have. With the this. most impressive part too is that every single time they release a new set on a new plane, they have to come up with an entirely new story of new people there and how the main characters connect to it. People mm -hmm. have gotten a little sick and tired of the fact that these five people are always at every single instance of yeah. every plane because they're just That's they're being thrown right. around as well, the look, Avengers so think, of magic. I think in order to try to do a movie, I think we'd have to do this because like right then then we'll take it from like putting a, pr a producer hat on for a second. Let's assume there's been books written about this stuff. Yeah. People have seen all this stuff before, right? So you're trying to be like, what's the mo what's the movie people want to see in terms of you're a Magic the Gathering fan? Yeah. Like, what would be the movie? And it would be like the Avengers type thing, right? Like, I'm assuming it's like, you're, it's like they've read the story of of you know Khans of Takir or Theros I'm assuming like the big like all the planes are coming together or something would probably be like the big blockbuster as well as also introduce it to the average folk you're gonna like this Matt uh -huh. so on Zendikar when okay. these Eldrazi Titans have been released out of the Hell Vault okay. uh, by someone named Nahiri Nahiri like breaks them out and they're starting to destroy this plane and Zendikar is Nissa's home plane so she very much feels connected to it to save it all of these people come together and they form something called the Gate Watch, which is the five characters we talked about, and they all do something called dope. the Oath of the Gate Watch, this is so dope. where they all like raise their hands and they so say something. So clearly, the third act is they form the Gate Watch. Yeah, I mean that's like, the moment. That's the moment. You know, when yeah. they're all fighting on in the Avengers, when all fighting okay. on the bridge together, it's all of them raising their hand and making this pledge to fight together for the better of them. It's like when they decide that you know what, we're all separate entities, but we should join together. Is that Ravnica? Is that why people like Ravnica a lot? Ravnica is different. Ravnica has these the things. Gate Watch is right after Ravnica, though, right? Yeah, it came a few sets after. Sorry, we were just <laughs> <to> inscrutable. <Ravnica. laughs> my nose is gonna bleed. I'm like, what? Uh, what? 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 Huh? People, people like Ravnica because on that plane there are a bunch of things called guilds, and each of those guilds had cool Jimmy, individual leaders okay. and okay. like. Okay. Small stuff. side question: If you ever have kids. Are your, all your bedtime stories just going to be like, well, let me tell you about the Gate Watch. The Gate Watch. Let me tell you about how once the Eldrazi. Okay. Okay. How much? Okay. How, how, much, how long have we been doing this? My brain is about to explode. Yeah. Okay. So twenty minutes. Here we go. Okay. We got to we gotta try to do a pedal of the metal. Okay. So I think Gate Watch is good. I think building to a point where the all these people don't take enough oaths in yeah, movies anymore. Oath? People used to just put their hand up and swear on shit, and that go. was a fucking awesome. Well, scene. it's like it's like it's like Guardians of the Galaxy when they take that oath, like right. But this will be even cooler because it'll be five super gods. Yeah, <laughs> we'll Just look up Oath of Jace, Oath of Nyssa, Oath of Shandra. I, I can't, I literally can't. We have 20 minutes, we, we gotta have, figure this out. We are okay. closing, we are I, close. this is the, the lore watch is closing so the before, vault on the Just, lore. We'll take two seconds to take, for all the Magic fans God. who are going to complain about all the wrong stuff we say, we sorry, you just heard in real time everything me and Will know about Magic the Gathering. <laughs> so we are attempting now with the little thing that we have to construct a fun story in 20 minutes All right, I've got a, titles for the five acts. Okay. Act one, red right about to get executed. Boom! You're yep. a planeswalker, Harry. Yeah, Chandra uh, becomes becomes planeswalker. Two, act two is learning about whatever the threat is yep, and learning, learning about the, the being a planeswalker. And then end of act two is we've got to stop the thing. Act three, I have titled, we're gonna need a fucking team. Yeah. <laughs> act four is all hell breaks loose, and then act five is your big old punch him up. So, all right, I'm gonna throw up close. real quick, and then we'll do this. Yeah, I um, think. Um, okay, so all right, I think so, okay, no, 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 so I feel like I've been. 
storing all of my energy over the course yeah. of this. Like I've just been hearing lore, and yeah, it's like yeah. Goku's in the hyperbolic time chamber, <laughs> just yeah. getting pumped up on magic lore, ready, just ready to fucking Here's, bust out. Well, okay, there's two ways to take this. It's either going to be Chandra teams up with somebody and becomes like seven samurai, and they need to go find the other three planeswalkers, and they need five or whatever. Right, it right, right. Or it is when all hell breaks loose. They need the team for the big finale. That's how it is in the story, mm-hmm. right? So the Eldrazi come back, and they don't just come back by themselves. They come back, and they make Eldrazi spawn. So these little things come down to the planet. They start polluting people's minds. Like, like you so know. The first, so and the first so, two acts, I told you, I think you are definitely coming. We're definitely jumping in with Chandra. I think she's a good end point. I like her world. It's also, by the way, in terms of just if I was being a producer for a second, it's like it, it's nice that aesthetically will instantly feel different from other fantasy stuff because we're starting like steampunk steampunky land. mages and stuff like that you're following she seems like a cool character to start with her stakes are already really clear in terms of her parents are being executed there's this overbearing government she's about to be she's, executed she's, her she parents were executed her, her overbearing government she she's her about parents to are be, both dead yeah. she's about to be executed are they not actually dead? well her mom's still oh, alive fantastic so then <laughs> <she's>, <laughs> they did all the good stuff yeah. so then so then she's about to be executed and then yeah you're wizard Harry she yeah. suddenly snaps or whatever it is yeah. she crosses planes and she's in a new world and she's like so why just am I dead teleport. where the hell am I they just yeah. teleport well yeah they essentially sh- planes walk to a new plane in the story she's very young when this happens and yeah. then she like wakes up and all these pyromancers are like hello child so I think what we'll have to break We're gonna, from she's the she's gonna have to meet one of the other yeah, characters we see, her mentor she, yeah. has to be another planeswalker can't be we can't just go into like mage land of other pyromancers yeah yeah she's got yeah. Um, into our main so of those Gideon would be a good yeah, but, dad like, Gideon would be I was the, actually gonna say Liliana cause then it would be like she literally if you wanna talk about out of the frying pan into the fire Right, like right. she stumbles into like the first person she meets is like this the dominatrix most manipulative, demon lady, yeah. and it's like maybe I'll kill you, maybe I won't, depending on whether I want to absorb your power or not. So you could get like she's thrown into this intrigue of different planeswalkers, that's just throwing some shit out mm-hmm. there. It'd be like Liliana is this self, you know, motivated kind of self interested, like a Han um, Solo, half yeah. evil, half good uh, mage going around. Right? She definitely takes. I like the idea she too because see, she's yeah. centuries years old. So she, you see the same Liliana with the child Chandra, and when child Chandra grows up Lillian's the exact same age oh, so you get cool. a really good idea well I like that she would see Chandra and know what she is like this is this is something right. powerful and Raw if she material. was just for a second if, if like she was heading to Gideon for some reason like some deal that they need or she needs his help or she's gonna take something from him she's it's gonna like, kill him yeah. it's like she, perfect yeah. come with me and she gets to play a little bit of like I'm a good guy and then she's kind of you know manipulating this girl to help her out on this journey and then this is how Chandra's gonna get thrown into you know it's that scene where it's like she shows up and she's hearing Gideon and Liliana argue about the Eldrazi and don't you understand that now we need you Liliana and Liliana's like screw you Gideon you're supposed to help me Chandra's like what the hell have I got myself into sort of you know thing. I kind of like the idea more that that Liliana because in the whole Amon Ket story Liliana takes them all to this plane and they're like why are we even here like oh okay there's some craziness going on but really Liliana's there because one of the demons that she has bound her soul to is the, gonna be there and she wants to murder it what if she wants to you okay you bear with me Chandra yeah she's like Chandra and she's like oh perfect You'll, I'll, I'll mentor you young girl but she's mm-hmm. like perfect this will be the perfect thing to get one of these demons off my yeah, back I'll just sacrifice she's... this girl to him <laughs> yeah do you know or I mean? use like... her fire powers because she has something that I can't do power wise yeah well I like the idea that at first she's gonna lead her into a trap do you know what I mean uh-huh. like it's like the like it's like this like hey I'm gonna you know yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. again, if you you have that characters like they're riding that line of good and evil, and it's like I'll just sell this per, I'll, or, or I'll trade the debt or something. Right, like that, right, you know right. I mean? To trade like the, the life. Here's something yeah. that could be Chandra fun. like kills it somehow, or you know. Like, here's yeah. something that could be fun is that you could do bring Chandra in as this like newcomer into the world of Planeswalkers. I feel like Gideon, Jace, Liliana, and. Um, Nessa have all been planeswalkers for a while, and they're all in this like right. They're all well, when adults. We see that, them. I think they all work in shades of gray by this point. They've all saved different planes. They've all done this stuff before. So what I like is I like Chandra having this like coming in, and the first instinct of all these people is like she's this naive planeswalker to the one that essentially is the person who calls for them to make the oath. Like she's going to be the one that she may not be the most powerful, but she's the one who's going to get them all to put their stuff aside because she just came from a world of corruption and the government playing in grays That's and everything. True. Yeah. Loss. So, for an example, like I don't know who it would be, but there'd be somebody who'd be like, who would know, like Nissa, especially if you do Nissa's kind of like in head in the clouds. Like you could say that she may be the most good and spirited, but she's lost her touch with humanity. She kind of like maybe focuses on just saving the nature and stuff like that. She could be the one who knows right away that Liliana's gonna kill Chandra, and she's like, yeah, it's unfortunate. Like Chandra is the tool mm-hmm. for Liliana. Like, wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah, yeah. I like that yeah, as yeah. a take on the character. I just don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to. I don't know if that's okay. where you introduce her or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I feel like I'm translating a dictionary <laughs> right now. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Gideon, I like. Okay. So well, just, well, just to just to pivot for a second because I feel like I'm starting to get a ground on who the, yeah. the character is in the story. 
story and stuff like that. Tell me about this threat and the the gate and the hell yeah. and the monsters. Like, okay. how does it work? Like, so the Eldrazi originally attacked this plane way back in the day, and then they were secured away in this thing called the Hell Vault. And the Eldrazi are the big monsters, right? Think of the Eldrazi as yeah, they're giant monsters, and the way that one of the uh, like all omnipotent like planeswalker god dragons describes it to them is that there's a puddle of water and you're a human and you're reaching into the water with your hand so in this situation the human is the eldrazi but what the what we see as the people on the plane as and the fish in we only see the hand but there's something far greater and beyond it. But this is the physical manifestation so of it's me a real, it's entering a real Lovecraftian. the plane. Yeah. Very okay. Lovecraftian. So, so, they, so, so they were planes. so they attacked at one point, and then the gate was formed to block them. It wasn't a gate. They got imprisoned on the plane because that was the only way so that like they the could hand, stop. Handcuffs them. inside. Yeah, they got the handcuffed puddle. inside the thing, and then that was broken apart by some other like for and some other like reason. Is that like right before the story starts? This thing is already broken, or is like about to break? Like I'm trying. Well, to, like, it depends on how many more characters you want to introduce because there's a whole story as no. to. <laughs> <laughs> the original reason they were entrapped, who trapped them, well, who I was, got trapped well, by them. What I was going to try to think, do you do something like where, again, like your prologue essentially would be like, there was a great battle and this evil was held off and then now yeah. it's breaking yeah. out. Yeah. I could totally see for some reason, just over centuries, the, the chains on them have started to snap and then well, okay, boom, now they're 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 like that idea that they're... Yeah. Yes. Okay, the whole point is like, once they're done consuming the life of one plane, they just I'm like, all right, I mean, go to another one. I mean, this is pretty common, whether it's Mass Effect ripping off of Babylon 5 or whatever, it is the, there's a threat that is more cosmic and greater and everybody lives in their own universes on their own planets and stuff like that. But ultimately, there is this bigger threat that can yeah. destroy everything. What plane is it originally trapped on and then it breaks? Uh, Zendikar. The Wait. one that Nissa's from. The one Nissa. that Nissa's from. The green one. So she's okay, the I have, a, I have a, a, okay. a lore change that I'm going to brave. Because okay. you were like, the evil government in Chandra's plane like uses the magic power to oppress people or something like that? Well, they just like, want to control how people use the power of the plane. Okay, my thought would be that like, I don't know, it's like maybe complex, Chandra's but... hometown plane is the one that's trapped the monster and then she's about to get ex... Never mind. This oh, 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 what, what if the consulate, the evil government, is harnessing that yeah, so energy? About, yes. so this is what I was about that's say, why like, they want to control so the usage. Me. For Eldrazi, just assume that it's Cthulhu or whatever, right? It's this great, it's this creature that can hit all these planes. And I think, like, again, like. I any, said, what I'm interested in is there's the one plane where they're like, who are the people on the sure, one plane so, that's like dealt with holding so, on to holding this thing? Well, back here's what I'm going to say is like, Chandra, what would be nice is Chandra outside of like, why does she matter to this world outside of just being this rookie that shows up? She is evidence. It'd be this is like, yes, I like the idea that the government from her plane is using Eldrazi power like right like they're yeah. like it's almost Harnessing like the it'd be as if out. barely it'd be, if Eldrazi were with nukes these planes have gone through wars Nisa's planet was destroyed by nuclear annihilation it's just gone now Gideon's yeah. everybody else's they all have a nuclear proliferation and be like we do not do this shit anymore little do they know that Chandra's Chandra's country mm -hmm. is like nuke city right now they are using nuclear weapon to warm water like so they are just using so they're the harnessing ship. the power of this evil thing yes power, that's why they're steampunk and all high tech yeah, yeah. so yeah. little well, they realize there's this rising tide of Eldrazi coming from this plane and oh that's because why, they're just emitting all this stuff yes, and they're and, hungry for and it and I like Nisa is this like broken person who's essentially already witnessed Eldrazi in fact it's so ancient and old some people don't even believe the stories right you have right. Gideon being like I've created this beautiful culture and society like my land is wonderful you think I'm going to fall for fairy tales of Eldrazi coming apart and Nisa was like I live that or whatever I don't know right right uh, so <laughs> so then they're not chained up at all they're just still thirsting through the multiverse and the next spot they realize they're gonna go hunt down Chandra's plane because they're the ones harnessing crazy energy and doing crazy things no, or no, they're, they're trapped on that planet and the government is using them and the reason that they went after Chandra's parents is because the rebels gonna... didn't know what they were harnessing but they thought like the government's hiding something from us and they that wanted could be to bring something. Okay, this is getting complicated <laughs> let's, let's pivot for a second yeah. off of what the exact why and where force yeah. of this is. At some point, yes, you're so like 15 minute mark, she's going to turn into a planeswalker yeah. and escape to somewhere, right? And now she's realizing there's a big yeah. wide multiverse and maybe she didn't know about this before or she did and she didn't realize that she was a whatever. To me, I'm like, yeah, what is that next big thing that happens? Is it that all hell breaks loose? Is it that... Maybe Liliana knew all along because she's centuries old. Go to try, ahead, to try to do a thing. simple... Yeah, because I don't want to get caught. To try to do a simple thing. If Act 1 is Chandra becomes a planeswalker, the consequence of that, just bear with me, is the Eldrazi now have... I don't know how they're trapped there, but the Eldrazi now have an exit, right? Let's assume there's been no planeswalkers from Chandra's planes before. Right. In becoming a planeswalker, because she survives her execution, she has also opened the portal, finally, for the Eldrazi to get out. This 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 threat that people have thought is gone for a long time. So simultaneously, the first act you have, now the Eldrazi, little do, right? It's it's the one, it's in the same way that 
um, Frodo becomes a hero at the same time that Sauron is so going to. So she's opened a hole yes. to her. She's opened right. a hole to her realm. Yes, essentially. Which that realm is the realm that has the Eldrazi. That's what's going to leak the, out. The, the fingers yeah. of the Eldrazi that were broken from a gate are in Chandra's planes, and everybody, you know, nobody's seen the Eldrazi for years, and now suddenly, little do they realize the Eldrazi is going to the Eldrazi is going to spread across the multiverse right. again. So, or or because this plane is filled with brilliant inventors and stuff, when the Eldrazi tried to attack that plane, they managed to trap it, and why Chandra. And so Leaving the plane, they're like, oh, yeah, they we like sense it. it, and they start reaching out, start breaking through their mm-hmm. boundaries because that rift has been opened. Yeah. What would they then need to do? Like, yeah, I was trying yeah, to think like I'm emotionally just... where you get to that because it's like one version would be like, right, Chandra is willing to destroy her planes to save all planes. What right? if it's or more? You... What if it's more like when Liliana meets Chandra, she realizes a couple of things. One, this person can help me, and then when she finds out where Chandra's from, she's like, wait a minute, I want to harness the energy of those people too because I want to live forever. Why do planeswalkers go into other people's planes? To usually, there's a disturbance in the forest. The okay. police. Yeah, kind of. I think it'd be easy for our brains just to think of planes as countries. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, they're just, they're, so they're different, just nation states. Yeah, essentially. nation states, and they can teleport between them. They can jump onto airplanes. Because I really like the idea. <laughs> and travel to them. Yeah, because okay. I like the idea that, that Liliana is really, truly deep down, turns into like maybe the enemy by the end of this because she's using everyone for the, her own nefarious means. And part of that is like, oh, Chandra, you're from this plane. Well, the secret right would be that, I, again, I don't know if it's literally, but it would be like the thing given to her would be after 400 years, the old drives, right? The, the, her her, her uh, gamble or, or her deal would be like, your bro- like we will bring back your brother, right? right I'm going gonna, gonna to throw a big will yeah. question that kills our momentum okay. for just a second. Yes. But what is this movie about? Like on a heart level, yeah, like on an so, emotional level, like just because I'm, uh, we're, I just feel like we're getting so into the weeds on the uh, on the sort of on the plot as opposed to the I agree. story. So I was trying. That's what I was trying to get to yeah. in terms of what was Chandra. Here's I think. Yes, Again, you don't like, want to be a yeah. cho- you don't want to be like a chosen one thing. I think ultimately, right? Some of the basic things you would do in terms of both you know Batman Five or Lord of the Rings is like I think coming together. Jesus, sorry, I'm throwing D20s here. There's right, coming games. together to fight an ultimate evil is important, right? It's all you're essentially having these people put aside their own petty, selfish interests to it's save like all humanity. Selflessness. I think, That's like the Avengers right there in a the nutshell, right? Yeah, I think for Chandra, yes, I would try to make it a coming, so it's like make Chandra essentially a coming of age story well, here, okay, here, but within here, that. Here's oh, what, here's, and again, maybe yeah. this will dial us in a little, because what I'm also getting, if she's our main character, I'm trying to think of what is your climax, what's your confrontation. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get in terms of what. But I think one of the, well, here's, here's the real trick, and I don't know Harry, Harry Potter pulls this off because it's baffling. My only worry right now is she has no goal. She just is about to be executed and then teleports for a reason that's totally beyond her control into another plane and then gets caught up in someone else's adventure. Maybe her goal is revenge. And then she's like the fucking Jiminy Cricket. Like, yeah, is her goal, does she have some, like, let's, because that's how you're going to define the arc of this thing is by giving, is Chandra's specific goal. And yes, maybe it's to save her parents or it's to save her world or it's to get revenge on the people that killed their, like, I need to know that that to understand the movie. Yes, I think in the same way that the other people need to put aside their selfishness, I think Chandra should have her specific goal. Again, her whole world has been her world, and now she's being thrown out into a wider world. And I think whether, right. yeah, we should pick, is it... Because that's going to be her quest. That's her thing she's is going Is it she towards. finds out her parents aren't dead, and she wants to go back and save them? Does she find out... Do, is she like, I can't find... I've left, but I want to come back and help the rebellion. Like, before she got executed, she saw the Matrix where all the people are plugged in as batteries. Right. You know, and then they were going to execute her. Okay, and then, here's some... like. It, yeah. If you were gonna do that, there is some crisis on her world. Yeah, and then like again, it's a classic Wizard of Oz, right? Dorothy, it's wait, Wizard of Oz. Dorothy wants to go home. Yeah, right. Dorothy's fucking house gets hit by a tornado, and then she winds up in this weird yeah. ass world, and she's like, "I gotta get home. My fucking my depression era family needs me." <laughs> yeah. Right. So I think you could do an urgency there. Yeah, and because tra- then I think that also plays into the deeper theme of like this. Some problems are bigger than just your home. Yeah, like yeah. there are some problems that affect everybody, and you need to you know like. Yeah. And I, 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 I can see the push and pull there for her. Can I read you the oath? Yes. So they all like stand up in the thing and they realize, <laughs> shit, we gotta do this together. She's like, and Chandra literally goes, every world has its tyrants following their own desires with no concern for the people they step on. They're no different than the Eldrazi. So I'll say it, never again. If it means people can live in freedom, I'll keep watch. So that was like her passion. In this story, that's why. she. It's about the tyrants, it's about the people that oppressed her parents. It all ties back to that. So yeah, I, I like the idea that she gets... She's part of the rebellion because her parents were executed, right? Or, right. You know, and maybe they're still alive. And they're, or maybe it's kind of like... she found out something. I like yeah, that she... Maybe like, that's, that's why they got executed. Some, they got some, too close. There's some... They've been using this ancient power for too long, and then she realized oh, the oh, truth oh, of oh, it. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
it feels like you could do something, right? Like you would do that. The thing she found, because at first it's like, okay, it's all, right, all right, all right, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So you would do she. She's in the resistance. She's like they're trying to figure out the the government's got some dark secret. Her parents got executed. She's about to get executed. And this thing she found out, she's just a clue. She doesn't even understand it yeah. yet. And then boom, she gets sucked into Ileana's world or whatever, and she gets caught up in this intrigue. Like she's like, I gotta get home, and Ileana's like, tough shit. I gotta sacrifice you to a demon to pay off my demon credit card, <laughs> right? And then it would literally be she's about to toss her into the pit. Right, or to sacrifice her to the demon, and then she's like, "You don't understand. There's these resistance people back home." She's like, "Yeah, I don't give a shit. Like, there's this thing, the the Aldrazi." Aldrazi. And yeah. then she's literally about to plunge the knife in her heart, and she's like, "What the fuck did you just say?" And it's yeah. like, "What the Aldrazi?" Like, okay, that's bad, right? Yeah. So yeah. then you find out that like, go saving her home and the bigger quest of the saving the world for a time seem aligned. I like but the, then you would do at some point, someone wants to make the choice of like, we can just destroy this plane or we can seal this plane off from the rest of the multiverse oh, there we and go. sacrifice. That's a good the same metaphor of her, she was about to sacrifice her to these demons. All of the rest of the planes are like, let's just sacrifice Chandra's home. I would do Liliana comes up with a plan you want to do a growth for Liliana. Oh, okay. The Chandra teaches her is Lily, like Liliana does, like they all come together. It's like, it's a gathering of the races. She's like, you guys got to hear what this girl says. And she's like, I don't get the big deal. There's this mean government, they execute people and the people are disappearing and the co only code name I came up with is the Eldrazi and like people drop glasses yeah. and like the Eldrazi is like we haven't heard that name for 2,000 years yeah, yeah, you know yeah. again, like, some people would have to not believe in the same way that people don't believe Sauron's real it's here's like, the theme of the movie is yeah. all for is all for one and one for all yeah. because what you do is like yes at first it's like again she has to learn that there's a bigger plane there are you know interests beyond hers right there's yeah. the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one but there's also they say in the next Star Trek movie sometimes the needs of the few the needs of the few oh, matter oh. as well so hold on hold oh, on yeah, yeah. because yeah basically what I was going to say is you do yes the, they all come to like again it's like we need to stop this threat I need to get back yeah. home she assembles her team they pull off some mighty task and then yeah you would do that they like the solution they come up with is like sorry we got to obliterate your home tough yeah. shit and she's like are you fucking kidding me like I'm the only reason you people know about this yeah. stuff like and then you would have she and, breaks from and them. she finds that her mom's still alive well, see, so yeah. this is gonna say this yes. is the emotional okay Liliana and Chandra are a great duo because if you think of Liliana as she's gonna have her Han Solo moment because yeah. what's gonna be is Liliana is somebody who lost her brother mm -hmm. and has spent hundreds of years doing evil essentially more or less with the val with the justification of I'm just trying to save somebody mm -hmm. I love Chandra is in the same spot right mm -hmm. she lost her parents but she is the better version of Liliana and Liliana is going to preach in terms of like you don't understand the world and she has the cynicism and ultimately Chandra's lack of so like the ultimate thing would be in the end Chandra's rewarded her mom is still alive and you'd have that moment where Liliana has her Han Solo moment comes in and helps it and she sees Lily she she sees Chandra reunite with her mother in the same way that she's never going to be reunited with her brother, and yeah. she's going to accept it, and she's going to be like, "You, you were worth it. Like you, so a person like you deserves to reunite with your mother. You're a good person." Liliana will walk off as the epic badass who I did also, the right thing in the end. I also like that you do that. This oath, right, yeah. is the oath is that we are all going to protect. It's like the United Nations, yeah. right? Like it's yeah. like the, it's as, the as, as everyone loves the UN. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everyone's but favorite. You do. It's like they're all together, right? So it's like we will all defend each other. Even the smallest yeah. of us, the greatest of us, we all exist together as a pact. We're not going to sacrifice someone yeah. to evil to to delay evil. Yeah. So you would do that again. At first, she's like, "Well, I've got to save my home, right?" And that's yeah. all she gives a shit about. And then she finds out about this whole bigger realm. This whole bigger realm is like, "Shit, we got to sacrifice your home." Yeah. But then it would build you to that moment where all of the other characters, their kind of growth moments, they're like, "Fuck that! We are going to stick yeah. our." Neck out for good no matter where good is. Yeah, because and we, so that's the other yes. that, that the whole that the whole plane comes together. All of the planes come together for the safety of one. So if you want to get to like so just taking a tab at each of these characters, like Gideon makes a lot of sense. Gideon is um lawful good. Well, yeah, but Gideon is is uh, not Helm's Deep. Um, Gondor. He made his great civilization. He's like, I, why would I like? Why would I risk? Or his father did exactly. He's, he's like, he's like, I don't believe, like the Eldrazi. I mean that that, that that boogeyman from two thousand years ago. Like, let them come against our walls. Like, we'll be fine. We don't need help anybody. Yeah. Like, they're not bad people per se, but they're just no. We're great. We're we're America first, we're right? Set. We're 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 yeah, ourselves we're first. We're all set. Nisa is the one who knows everything. Nisa would be the one who understands the Eldrazi. Says it because she connected with them. She's also crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and she's broken, she's wounded, and she's, she's not actually that useful. Happen. She's seen it happen, so she'd be the one who would whisper, be like, this is what happens, and then of course came and be like, she's a mad woman, don't listen yeah. to her. But what she wants to do, I think she wants to avoid it. She's wounded, she never wants to deal with it ever again. Mm -hmm. Like, she'd rather run, I think, ultimately, is what we're going to do with her. Mm -hmm. She'd rather hide off in the woods, because she literally brain connected with yeah, them. Yep, 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 then yep. you have Chandra's, of course, as the most personal, like, we're just going to go help them. Liliana, as we know, she's trying to, she'd rather make a deal with them if it could mean getting the power of bringing back her brother. Mm -hmm. And then Jace, this is where I would say, Jace, I think, would actually be 
you would make it seem like Liliana would be the traitor, but she's not. Liliana's going to be the growth. Jace being the most tricky uh, and like the mindful is going to be the smart one who maybe is the one who can bring them he's all together. He's going to be the one who comes up with the, with the plan to destroy her Exactly. She's the, one, the she's, he's the pragmatic one. Yeah, he's, he's like, the, look, tough shit. Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah. He's the one that's going to ultimately decide to blow the plan He would up. be, uh, not to, for those who watched Angel, not to spoil Angel, but he would be... Um, not uh, to spoil Angel, but I'm I about to spoil it. Angel. Yeah, but now I forget the guy. The guy in Angel that does the bad thing. <laughs> it's like, at one point, he's the one who steals, he steals Angel's baby because ultimately he knows he's he does the wrong thing for what he right, thinks is a greater good. It's like, the right yeah, reasons. Yeah. I think that's Jace. Jace is ultimately the guy. He's the one who's obsessive. He's studying the books, and he's the one who realizes the only way to stop this is to kill Chandra's homeworld and everybody else, and he's going to try to execute it without telling mm-hmm. anybody else. And then when they all have gone through all their problems, when they reveal Jace did this, and Nisa, you know, Nisa actually already faced the Eldrazi, and she says it's impossible to beat them, and Gideon, you know, realized that Gideon loses some of his own... After all these people have their own personal drama, they eventually get to the point where all the them united. I, okay, I, have, I think yeah. I have the structure of the movie. Yeah. Okay, so you're Act 1, we're with Chandra in yeah. steampunk land, uh, and she's running around with the resistance, she's angry about the death of her parents, yeah. and you know, she, they discovered the government has this secret energy source called yeah. Eldrazi, and that's how they It's been. the big thing her dad discovered before yeah. he died. Yeah. It's yeah, what yeah, he yeah. died my to God. discover. Codename using, Eldrazi. <laughs> yeah, codename Eldrazi, and my God, they've been using it to oppress people, yeah. right? Yeah. And then she's about to get murked, and she gets zapped into... Um, and you know, she's about to get murked, the rest of the resistance is about to get killed. Killed, right, yeah. like they're moving on the resistance stronghold, yada yada yada, yeah. and she gets zapped from. You would even know. You know what would be great would be you even do the execution. Like she's in the middle of a daring escape. Like mm. she's literally about to cut the rope to like yeah. bust out, and like all of her resistance friends are there, and like right as they're about to spring into their plan, she gets zapped out. It's yeah, like what the like, fuck is going into on? Fire yeah, yeah, like, would, yeah. So yeah, now she winds up in Liliana's world, Dominaria, right? Liliana, Liliana, sorry, uh, and she's which is great because that's like the main magic world, yeah. right? So and. And yeah, Liliana is going to sacrifice her to a demon to you know pay the debt off. Yeah, she's like, oh, how convenient. And so you know she's learning about, and maybe you even do along the she way. She doesn't know it at first, right? Yeah, That's along the way to. she sees her first planeswalker duel because Liliana gets into a duel with another <laughs> magician like on the way to yeah. this demon or whatever. So you can get a little bit of that like, oh, Liliana shit. becomes her mentor. Uh, becomes her mentor, and then like Psych, there's that trick at the end of the act, like Psych, I'm about to sacrifice you. Right before she plunges the knife in her chest, like she she mentions code name Aldrazi, yeah. and then Liliana's like, what the fuck is going on? Holy shit, the Aldrazi are coming back slash I, I want is like oh no that's horrible we need to find out more about them they can give me greater power than I've ever known yeah. I think you would do okay here's what I would do I would do Liliana is going gets into a it's a duel with Jace mm-hmm. and then you would do that so we meet Jace and then the two of them hear about the, the Aldrazi and right? they're like let's go to Gideon we need to go to Gideon because like we're gonna do a meeting of the planeswalkers and like guy, we're gonna yeah. do an Entmoot essentially or like the council of Gondor of Elrond yeah. they're gonna meet at Gideon's home to discuss what to do he's about this he's the most powerful threat. in terms of like again these all seem to be like wanderers. Gideon's got he has a kingdom. He's yeah. got Greek gods in this perfect kingdom. He is a yeah. man who's made an and empire. And you can you both do. They're both like, oh fuck, we gotta go <laughs> yeah, talk they to Gideon. Like, like, yeah, Gideon's like, like the yeah, square. Yeah, 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 a lot of people no. don't like him for that reason. So, yeah, so. He's basically, a big basically do, Act three is the journey to Gideon's plane, yeah. and along the way, they meet the woman. Sorry, uh, really quick. I really love the I love the setup of them both hating Gideon. He's like, God, he's such a selfish prick. <laughs> that guy's never gonna help us. God, he's such a pretentious. You have this, and it just cuts to him. It's just like he's reading a book to children, and it's like. Throne. He's like, oh, Liliana, James. I'm like, God, fucking Welcome, friends. He's yeah. like trumpets and everything for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you do along the way. They meet up with Nissa because yeah. that's how you. Because to get there, they have to travel through a plane that was destroyed by the mm. Eldrazi. So then you You're hammer the stakes. You hammer it. home the stakes, and then yeah, uh, yeah. Chandra is the one who convinces Nissa to come along yeah. with them. But then again, Nissa's like this recluse in the woods. She went insane. Yeah. Like she's a kind of colorful character. They should I just lie to Nissa. Actually, they're like, whatever you do, just don't tell Nissa about Eldrazi. But we need her. Yeah. So she's like, El- Nissa, we need you or whatever. And then when they bring it up to Gideon, like, Nissa, here's Eldrazi. <laughs> she starts like, starts going <laughs> well, it's great too. So again, like, uh, yeah, and I think you do, that's where you play the romance with Chandra and Nissa, right? Because yeah. it's like, again, they're going through, they even like, they maybe everyone even assumed Nissa was dead. And they're like, yeah. holy shit, she's still alive. Um, but oh, you would do that. Good. She is the one who's going to reach out to this other person. Yeah. And the other two are like, whatever. But then, yeah, you can do them falling in love as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. good moment where, again, Chandra is worried about what could happen to her land. And you'd have, you know, she, after they talk about the Eldrazi, Nissa walks off because again she's reliving the death of her world yeah. and she's like what's the matter and she's talking about her land and then Nissa would be the one who's like no like this is what's going to happen to your family and yeah. everybody you ever know is yeah. you will lose everything so so basically you do your sort of midpoint in act three they meet up in Gideon's land we've yeah. assembled the council or whatever and then what I would do is while they're debating what to do and everyone's got their different motivations yeah. uh, Liliana wants to make a deal with these guys Gideon's Gideon. like fuck everybody like I've got like I have to 
protect my. Not even right. fuck everybody. Yeah. It's like I have to protect my. Yeah, I have to protect mine. Yeah. I can't um, sacrifice troops or men. Like so you would do in the middle of that, the Aldrazi attack. Gideon's plane. Little yeah. do they know, but they've been following them through, yeah. like because they Chandra opened is it opening up. these portals. So then you would do an attack, right? And then it's like a cool midpoint fight where it's kind of like when Loki attacks the big sky. We're just ripping yeah. off Avengers. Uh, when Loki attacks the shield yeah. at HQ, but yeah, you would do. They all come together and you get this cool fight where all of the planeswalkers are using their yeah. different uh, magic and they're barely able to f- hold off one of the Eldrazi. Yeah. Right? It's cataclysmic. There's tons of people have died in Gideon City or whatever. So it's oh, like this whole thing. To- but then you would do as a result of that fight Shane no, not Shane Jace comes up with the plan to like we're gonna destroy her home plane yeah it's like uh, cutting the root we have to cut the root that evil off at the root essentially yeah. and um the yeah, fellowship maybe, maybe the thing that even comes through isn't the full Odrazi it's them reaching through the portal with one of their arms and that they could barely even handle yeah yeah, yeah. so then yeah, you would do then this is also the moment where she discovers that her mother's still alive right yeah. and then there but then like the moment she discovers her mother's still alive they're like we're gonna nuke your home <laughs> and so she's like and then you would have she makes the choice like fuck that I'm gonna go back home and, and she, die with yeah, my people yeah. then I'm she like go runs and they're like shit she jumps through the portal or whatever yeah. yeah and then so you do then essentially your sort of act four act five is this you know sort of low moment where the all of them are being stirred to their more noble calling yeah and this oath and you know Chandra goes home uh and finds you know the city in chaos and stuff yeah. like that um what I would do is even in terms of um yeah when you talk about all for one one for all like to me what I like is that you can get I like that Chandra being your main character kind of in a similar way they kind of explore thematically in Hunger Games, but it's like they all see also Chandra as something to be used, which is nice in terms of like get like Jace would be like, if we do this with her, like this is the pragmatic plan. We bring her back. If the Eldrazi are tracking her or going through her portals, send her back to her homeland, destroy her planes and seal it up. Liliana's like, I'm gonna get her and bring the Eldrazi to me and suck up all their energy, become the greatest sorceress of all time or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. Gideon's like worried just about his planes. And he's like, Yeah, we need her to do X and then we'll protect my plane. Like they all have yeah, a ray yeah. to use Chandra. And yeah. they're not really asking Chandra what to do. And Issa would be the one that sees has seen this before, right? Yeah. Um and yeah, you would ultimately do Chandra is going to have to be the one that's going well, to you would do you, okay. So Nisa is the one who tells Chandra yes. what's going on. She's like, yeah. I, I, get it, I love you. They're setting you exactly, up. And that's where Don't the go is. home. Come with me to this other plane. Which is in a weird do. way, even using her for it's like, yeah, I Nisa, need, I need you. I need you to yeah. help me escape my pain and misery yeah, yeah, yeah. and have a lover and leave and ignore everything. It's like yeah. we can't ignore everything. Yeah. Nisa, like the Eldrazi is still out there, but then that's their love. So, so her essentially realizing everybody's using her yeah. for this ultimate good for these for their own purposes. Chandra is the one who brings them together. Like no, we all need to work together to save everybody, right? I think no, that can't be her. That's got to be Liliana. You don't think? Well, Chandra. Do Chandra. You? Chandra's low point is she's gonna go back home and die. Sure. Like Liliana, that's kind of like because it can't. She's the one who needs everyone to save her home. Like you need like the the one who is gonna plunge a dagger in her heart at the beginning is gonna be the one who's like, this is wrong, guys. Like someone. Yeah, yeah. No, Liliana. That, is, that turn has to come from someone being moved by something. Yeah, but that I would put this in the same way that yeah, yeah. But not to get into specifics, but in the same way that like Hansel is not the one to blow up the Death Star. He's the one that comes like. I, I think like Chandra well, needs to have the growth to. Well, then Sean, well, here's what Chandra yeah, yeah. would do. Chandra would be like, "I'm gonna go back and it's not. I'm gonna go home to die. I'm gonna go back and, and fucking fight, fight that. Yeah. 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 Anyone who wants yes. to come That's with me for real, come yes. with me. You know what so I mean? So like, Here's what you would do. Here's what you would do. Is that every, actually yes? Okay. Here's how it yeah. works. Is they're all like, "Yeah, Chandra, we're gonna go back to your plane and fight that thing." And then everyone's like, "Yo, we're gonna let her go through the portal first, and then we're gonna fucking close that shit and send a bomb in after yeah. her, right?" <laughs> and then you would do essentially. She finds out about it, and so she goes off on her own and closes the plane behind her mm-hmm. and she's like i will fight that thing on my own like yeah. fuck it like i'm gonna save my kingdom right yeah. and so she's essentially going on this suicide mission more or less yep. and then the, she shows more her, courage than she all shows them. more courage than the, the youngest and most impetuous of them shows more bravery than all of them together yeah. and that moves right. the rest of them to make this turn to save her yeah because we want to talk about it. on the romance side it would be like nisa would be like this is what's happening let's run off together tonight yeah and then she wakes up and chandra has left yeah she and then we see her again, tooling up with her wizard gear and nisa would be the one actually the want to talk about who has a speech to them all like screw that with Liliana because again I think you still want to play like Liliana's back but yeah. he's like she's stronger than all of us like she, yeah, we were yeah. going to run away together yeah, yeah. and you wouldn't have used her and, and she would have she was rather than l- run away and live with me yeah. and like live in peace she decided to go back and kill herself yeah. to try to protect her homeland she's better than all of yeah us. and then it's like you know like we are one homeland that was yeah. what she was trying to show us that's what we that's what the lie we sold her on <laughs> yeah. and then you know we fucking stabbed her in the back and I'm going in after yeah. her right and that's great because now her her climax is she's been hiding from the Eldrazi and now yeah 
Nisa's climax is essentially like this choice to go face her fear because yeah. Chandra inspired her to do that, right? And then, then they start to fall like dominoes. And Gideon's like, my God, uh, what sort of man have I given to Gideon? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And then he goes, and then, uh, and then you know, um, and it's great. You get them all like diving through the portal or yeah. whatever. And then, um, yeah, Liliana's like, oh, fuck it. You know, I'll probably die anyway. Or the gothic will be like, or you have her not. And then she shows up in the middle of the battle or whatever. Yeah, that's the Han Solo move. It's the all the land they're 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 in the battle and they're like what is like from what what resources come across like our lands they are tapped and then she shows up <laughs> <laughs> and then she shows up and then yeah. you'd you actually rather than, you'd actually end with a gate with the with the gate watch because what would be is they defeat yeah, it yeah, yeah. they then all they are gonna go back to their own planes and they all make this oath oh yeah they make the oath together to protect every yeah, to, to yeah. be the yeah. gate watch yeah, 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 yeah. I, like, yeah. I like Jason Lilly oh and then your climax is that like the fucking Eldrazi or whatever this evil source is has like got into one of their brains right um, so like one of them has this hidden evil lurking inside them that hasn't come out yet they but then they all take dress? the oath no I mean they do I mean Nissa came the closest but they do infect people yeah, yeah. They, there's a whole nother plane who would, be, who would be the coolest like setup for a bad guy like I feel like it's Jace well, the Jace, most powerful Jace. I feel like the setup that if there's a sequel it's like it's Jace like they're yeah. gonna be fighting yeah. like Jace this whole thing has opened it would be if not to go into like all world history so that they could get a Jace because he's right it would be like if you talk about like world history be like they all it's like the world's become larger like the teleportation airplanes have come yeah. and people can now travel and they did it to fight a, yeah. a same same evil one smart guy's gonna be like now that the roads are open like i can actually be the old drowsy like i can take yeah. <laughs> i can take yeah. ultimate power well, you could be interesting too is you would do at the beginning of this thing like you could do the planeswalkers are only kind of rumored of on yeah. most worlds and it's like a secret group or something like mm. that i don't know maybe that's dumb yeah. never mind jimmy's like go fuck yourself well <laughs> That's, That's a fun movie. I That's like good. that. Yeah, Magic. For, that came together. I okay. was shitting bricks for most the, of that thing. I was like, this is going to be yeah, so right. tough to do and so dry. But yeah, no. Well, I mean, I think unfortunately, they've done, done a lot of them, but I think the core we got to was pretty no, cool. No, that, that makes real, th again, like yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. to run through it as a five-act structure, right? Like, the, again, like we start with um, Chandra. Chandra on her world. She discovers this I mean, threat. It's, she it's gets a young girl, away. a rebellious young yeah, girl young, who's fighting yeah. against the government who lost her parents. Yeah. And then when she's, she finds out something horrible, uh, some sort of ticking clock, but something Eldrazi, there's this, she knows the government's doing something really and bad and before she can days, tell anybody. the Eldrazi are yeah. going to blank, right? Yeah. And then so she's like, oh shit, and then... Yeah, you go from that to, you know, this journey Liliana with and her Liliana, mentor, and she, meets, planeswalker. she meets Jace, she finds out she's a planeswalker, and then, they, you know, this, you know, again, like, I, I love that idea that she's going to, they're just yeah, going to the kill her. Yeah, the mentor's going to kill her. Yeah, and then that, oh shit, like, the, the Eldrazi are back. And then yeah. you have your journey to Gideon City, and yeah. the team coming together, that first attack, because they've been following through her through yeah. the portal, that's a great midpoint set piece. They beat the bad guy, but a terrible cost, and they also are, you know, like, they, it brings them to the all-separate conclusion about what they should yeah, do. Yeah, Act 3 is the big battle of Eldrazi against Gideon's land. I really like that sort of romantic moment for the two girls where uh, what's her, Nyssa tells her, yeah. like, they're going to betray you. Yeah, like, so run act, off with me. Four, That's a really great moment for Chandra to be, you know, this Act 4 is the, is the effect of the attack of the Eldrazi on Gideon's planes. Yeah. So and then, you know, Nyssa finds out they're going to destroy her. Then Act 4 ends with Chandra making the decision to, to go, go off home. on her own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Act 5 is everybody coming together as the planeswalkers to save Chandra's land and, and stop the Eldrazi the and then take the oath of, as the gate watch and the five of them are made but a team. They take the oath the right before they fight. Yeah. You can't do oh, it at the yeah, end yeah, of the movie. Yeah, yeah. That's no, like no, a, like, we all stand together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you got, cool, yeah. dying breath. you got dope post credit scene that yeah, sets up the Yeah, when Nick Fury shows up with a glowing box and he's like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, Jace is a bad guy. In the story, Liliana doesn't actually take the oath until later. And when she does, she has her hand behind her back so people are like, oh, she's got her fingers crossed. Oh, damn. That is the Magic the Gathering movie. Thank you so much, Jimmy, for providing us all of the all of the flavor. Could you just, Matt, could you just natty draw one more card for Jimmy? One more Oh, let's go Jimmy. until I mess up. No, we're going to be here be forever. It's an eight-hour podcast. I, don't know. Wait, I messed wait, up on Smoke you Teller. You can do art, right? Yeah. Just the, um, from the art of this card. That is Salt. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, I don't know what that is. Why was I saying the name? It's, Dutiful Return. Dutiful Return. All right. Two in the black. Return two, up to two target creatures from a gravity your hand. Return up to two target creatures. That's three in the black. Three in the black. Okay. This I mess, a, I right, we got to get one last good one. Archer's Parapet. Archer's Parapet is one in, Archer's the, Parapet, uh, one in the green for a zero five 5 wall, uh, and you can tap one in the black to tap it to make target opponent lose one life. Yep. Holy shit, dude. All right, last one with art. Just art. Let's see if we can... 
That is a Jeskai uh, something. It's two in a red for a 3-1 with prowess. It is two in a red with a 3-1 with prowess. It is the Bloodfire Expert. Bloodfire Expert. That's what it is. <laughs> but you knew the actual card. Because who cares about the names? Yeah. Ultimately, it's all about the cards. It's Jimmy, all about the cards. Is, I don't know if impressive, but... That that's is, impressive. That's one of the most impressive. Oh, no, we never forgot we got to have one character named Wooberg in the movie. Wooberg! Oh, like a wacky, like one of the... Like a wacky alien. alien. A wacky alien. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm no, like a little familiar, like a cute little, like one of them's got an owl named Woober. Done. All right, movie's <laughs> Done. over. Nailed it. Put a stamp on it. We finished it Put up. a finger on it. <laughs> Put a, uh, finger put a finger on it. On this it. one's done, baked, ready to go. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, do you want to look at some of the uh, navel gaze with us as we look at some of the reviews and uh, posters? Oh, we got one. We got one new review. Thank you for the five star reviews. All the other ones, uh, there's only well, actually they're all five stars. So thank you, everybody. Wow. Um, thank you well to deserved. Ambient Ambient Night for the newest review. Uh, five and then star. we also have from eight thousand. Depths, yeah. Uh, give us a five star, and as did. Best original podcast idea, funny, smart, and creatively inspiring. I will Thank say you. real quick. So we we put the poll out for Catan last week. Did we, we asked, talk about Code Three and Marky Mark Hudson last time? If we did, then great. Uh, if we didn't, shout out to you boys. But well, we got some well. good posters for Catan. Okay, yeah. Oh, so yeah, really quick, some... I want to talk about the poll. Yeah, I, I thought we did great. Yeah. on Sellers of Catan, and we put the poll out on at RJ Story Break, which is the official Twitter for Story Break. It's split, even down the middle, 50%. But you tweeted that on your normal Twitter, right? You look, crushed look, in it. In order to it sleep at night, us. because writers are very fragile creatures, um, in order to sleep at night, I'm just assuming that a lot of those people who voted are just Freddy fans that have not listened to the podcast yet, because otherwise... I do not feel good about this myself. Was tweet, this is from the story break f- thing, though. But Freddy retweeted it. No, I didn't. This oh is just God. This is just break. our fans. <sighs> Someone said I'm Waffle sorry, 134 said that we crushed it and he would watch the heck out of it. So <laughs> we also got some. We'll great, try to do better next time. We got some great posters. We got some really good yes. poster Lawrence art. Lawrence Biggers at Manti FX did a very kind of art, super moody like, poster. The settler, love it. Oh, yeah, wow. the settler. For it's like, like a very like uh, uh, graphic design Saul Bass esque. Yeah. And you have and you have and you have the tagline paved with good intentions, which is a really wow. Good that idea. is good. I like that. I love. Uh, and then we also got one that is amazing from Mark. Hutt. Hudson, uh, Marky, Marky Mark, Mark Hudson, Hudson. Uh, which is just epic. It looks like a like a like, looks a, like a poster for the mission. Or something. Wow! Yeah. You got nice. like a burning statue in the sunset, and it's just as the settler based on the 1995 board game Catan, <laughs> and it's from the creators of Dance Is a Real Buzziness. Two guys <laughs> attempting to grow beards, and uh, their friend and their Asian friend present. <laughs> like I'm just wow. happy that we, this, this is one two got the a- burning sheep and the dice in there, which I think is pretty cool. I think it's, it's nice that we've done two in a row that we took vaguely seriously and aren't stupid. <laughs> Bit alien buddy cop thing. Hey so. man, we were talking about. By the way, we were talking about maybe doing Kerbal Space Program next time, yeah. just so that we do a movie that is literally all oh. wacky green aliens. <laughs> next oh, time. Nice. It'll be like our Amazing. minions v like our minions. But as riff. always, uh, send us any uh, ideas. We definitely have a backlog of various ones that we kind of want to do. But again, we always like to try to do them. We literally came up with doing Magic the Gathering about. Five minutes before recording this, because Jimmy was in the office, and that is the way we like to do it. We like to yeah, keep yeah. ourselves on our toes and try to figure it out. From Mar- the hip. Mark and Lawrence, um, I, I, there, if, we, if we see any posters, we'll keep an eye out for uh, more posters, of course. But Mark and Lawrence, we're going to send you some stuff here. Uh, these are some dope posters. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, that'll do it for us uh, this week. Check out our, our new Twitter. Check us out. As it's at, all of our plugs. At RJ Story Break. Jimmy, what are you working on? Plug it. You can find me at JF Wong on Twitter, and that's where I usually post all my updates and my profile has all the links to everything I do so I won't bombard you with a billion things what's the thing you're most excited about right now Oh, geez. I mean, probably the Disney show. It's on Disney XD, which is the secondary, sort of like the second channel to Disney, like the ESPN2 to ESPN, and they have their own sort of late night um, like a, adult, like adult swim. swim yeah, kinda. but it's all video game based, and they're, you know, they just live streamed part of Evo last weekend, which is the big fighting game tournament, so it's really cool. It's great to see a lot of stuff that never would be on TV be on TV. And if you could sell your soul to one of the Magic the Gathering demons in order to get your brother back, which one would it be? Uh, the one that gives me all of the real expensive cards for free. Wow. I will say that, It would that, have to Jimmy. be the demon of Taco Bell, because let's face it, Freddy, that's going to be the one <laughs> that is going to have you in its clutches. That's true. Well, thank you, Jimmy. I will say that looking at your Twitter, which congrats on the 113.5 thousand followers, uh, but uh, you, you say actor, host, and filmmaker, and then the very first thing you list still is Ted from VJHS, which is where I will always, uh, outside, second from being just my friend, yeah. I'll think of you as Ted from VJHS. So thank you so much for coming. It was a blast to... Uh, why don't you, Jimmy, why don't you give us our sign-off? Yeah. Our oh, signature sign-off. What do you do? No, nothing. No, We're not good we at it. We don't have a real sign-off, so oh. give us one. Okay, sure. 
Thanks for watching and listening to Story Break, where we take your stories and break them apart and put them back together. We'll see you next time. God, it's Damn. so good. <laughs> good. Damn. Ah, I'm just gonna. That's quit. why you have the followers. What a, what a man. <laughs> <laughs>